Right, so here's a quadratic question. So we've got a curve, um, C, and C is defined as y equals k times 2x squared minus x squared, all of this. Okay, this is all one single curve, C. So what we've got is lots of different terms. What we need to do is collect together our like terms. So the first thing we do is we'll expand this first bracket. So y is equal to 2kx squared minus kx plus k, and then the, 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 uh, the last three terms, minus 5x squared plus x minus 2. Right. Now we need to collect them together, collect together our like terms, because I've got an x squared term here and an x squared term here. And I've got an x term here and an x term here. Right. So that means that y equals 2k minus 5 times x squared. And for that, 1 minus k times x. And then I'm going to add the final constant, which is k minus 2. So now I've collected our like terms. Now remember that our quadratic is written as a times x squared plus b times x plus c. So that's going to be my a x squared plus b x plus c. Right. Now, this tells us the graph lies below the x axis. Determine the range of the possible values of k. Well, if it doesn't cross the axis, there are no solutions. So we take the discriminant, we know b squared minus 4ac must be less than zero. Okay, if b squared is that, so now let's input my a, b, and c. So I've got 1 minus k squared minus 4 times a, which is 2k minus 5 times c, which is k minus 2. All of that has to be less than zero. Right, so let's expand the first bracket. 1 minus 2k plus k squared. Take away four lots of expand these two brackets and all of that is less than zero so 2k times k i've got 2k squared 2k times minus 2 that's minus 4k take away another minus 5k so that's minus 9k and minus 5 times minus 2 which is plus 10. right okay all this together so i've got 1 minus 2k plus k squared minus 8k squared plus 36k minus 40, all less than zero. Now, let's again collect our like terms together because we've got k squared, k squared, and I've got k and k. Put those together. So I've got 1k squared, but I'm taking away uh, taking away 8, so it's minus 7k squared. Plus, I've got uh, 36k, but I'm taking away 2, so that leaves me with 34k. And I'm taking away 40, but I'm adding 1, so that's taking away 39 is less than 0. Now, this would be a negative quadratic. Okay, so that would be a negative quadratic. And our negative quadratic, remember, looks like this. Okay? Now, if this quadratic is in terms of k, okay, not in terms of x as the original one was. So it's not the same quadratic. We're just looking at the values of k in that quadratic. So now, that's my, this is my negative quadratic. Okay, and now I'm looking for the point where x is less, or sorry, sorry, where k is less than zero. So that means I'm looking for it. I'm looking for these values here. Okay. Um, if I reverse this, it means that I'm gonna make this 7k squared and I'm minus 3k plus 39. Now remember, if I multiply by minus one, I change the inequality, and now it's greater than zero. Now, if I draw a positive quadratic, if I greater than zero, the 
same thing. It's where it's above the line, so that means it's there. So it's still in the tail. So now the big thing to remember is that you're used to writing inequalities as x being sandwiched between two values. That's this part. And that is not correct. That would mean if it's less than zero, not more than zero, yeah, greater than zero rather than less than zero. No. It means that the tails. So when we find the solutions for a quadratic, we get k has to be less than 13 over 7, or k is greater than 3, because those are our two roots, okay? k is 3 is this root, and k is 13 over 7 is that root, okay? So that's how it works. Don't get confused about where the solutions are. You don't always have to sandwich um, the value you're looking for between two limits.